Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride back again with another video. And today I'm really excited to share with you my spooky October plan with me in my bullet journal. I apologize, this is later than usual, but I must admit planning this video and filming it took me way longer than I expected. Sometimes it just is what it is. What I'm starting here is the painting that is going to become the entire cover page and the art that will be seen throughout the entire plan with me. This is the one piece of art I'm making and it's inspired by my impression of Dracula's castle without having actually read Dracula. <laughs> which sounds kind of silly, but one of my goals this October is to finally read Dracula. It's been on my TBR for forever. And when I was trying to think of what theme to do for October, I actually changed my mind multiple times. And every new theme I picked and I spent time planning, I ended up just feeling like it wasn't right. And then it occurred to me while I was thinking about books I wanted to read during the spooky season that creating a Dracula inspired theme could be really cool and also be extra inspiration, motivation for me to actually finally read the darn book. So that is why I decided to create this painting and I didn't really know what I was going to do when I started out. I had a very loose concept that I wanted it to be completely black and white, like it was an old photograph. And I wanted a big sprawling, creepy castle on the left and maybe a dead tree on the right, some foggy looking mountains in the background, the moon and lightning in the sky, and then what looks to be maybe a creepy rickety bridge <laughs> connecting the mountains on one side to the other. And other than that, I didn't really know what I was going to do. So this painting took me a couple days because I kept working one layer at a time and then taking a step back and looking at it and trying to get an idea of what I should do next. It was a very organic process. I decided to start with the background, a general gray wash of color to create the sky and then to start working on the mountains. And the way I tried to make it look like the mountains in the back were further away and also slightly hidden by mist was to keep those mountains lighter than the mountains in the foreground. And what would have made more sense just for ease of painting this would have been starting with the mountains further back that are lighter and then building on top of that as I got closer to the foreground with darker mountain ranges, darker hills but I didn't know exactly where I wanted the mountains to be, so I worked my way forward to back, which made things take a little bit longer to blend and get looking nice. For almost this entire painting, I only used lamp black watercolor from the Windsor Newton Cotman line and a variety of mostly pretty tiny brushes but I did whip out some zinc white Windsor Newton gouache to create the lightning at the end. For the mountains right at the back, I tried to only really distinguish the top of the mountains as if they were sticking through the fog or the clouds, and then to really fade them away to give that smoky, mysterious impression. Once I was happy with my mountains, I decided to start working on Dracula's castle. And this was really an experiment for me. I can't think of any time that I've ever drawn a castle and I've certainly never tried to paint a castle. So I was just trying to get some dimensions here that sort of felt spooky and unrealistic, <laughs> a bit cartoonish, really tall spires and strangely placed windows and wings that pop out here, there, and everywhere to make it look large and sprawling and kind of unsettling. I 
It feels like it's been a while since I've shared facts in a plan with me video. So I thought it would be fun to share just a couple in this video, some Dracula related facts for you all. So one really interesting fact that I came across was that Dracula was inspired by a nightmare. According to the biographer Harry Ludlum, Stoker said that he was compelled to write Dracula after dreaming of a vampire king rising from the tomb. In March 1890, Bram Stoker wrote, Young man goes out, sees girls. One tries to kiss him, not on the lips, but throat. Old count interferes, rage and fury diabolical. This man belongs to me. I want him. As I started working on the center portion of the castle, I realized that I had created sort of this big rectangular block without knowing what I was going to do with it. And it wasn't looking at all how I wanted. So I had to do some tweaking and shift things to kind of change the shape of this part of the castle so that it would better fit my vision. Chewie came to visit to inspect what I was doing, but I wasn't paying enough attention to him because I was very focused on this castle, so he ended up leaving again. Another interesting fact about Bram Stoker is that he never visited Transylvania while writing the novel. Bram Stoker did extensive research and then added a lot of imagination to create his setting. He apparently added details from travel books, including train timetables, hotel names, and the names of Transylvanian dishes. After struggling a bit with that first section, I decided to really lightly sketch out the rest of the castle using my watercolor brush with just the barest amount of color on it so I could get a general feeling for where things were going to go before I started painting them just to make things easier on myself. I was trying to keep the shadows to the top and left side of each tower and section since I was going to draw the moon closer to the center, sort of in the valley between the mountains on either side. So I wanted it to look as if the moonlight was illuminating the right side of the castle. Many critics believe that Stoker used Slane's castle in Scotland as the model for Dracula's home. It was a castle in ruins on a hill near the place that Stoker spent many of his summers. He was staying in the nearby Cruden Bay area when he wrote, A vast ruined castle from whose tall black windows came no ray of light and whose broken battlements showed a jagged line against the sky. I wanted to lighten the spot where the moon was going to be because I'd accidentally just created a wash over that whole area. So what I did was used a clean brush that I wet with clean water and then I just drew a circle with the water and dabbed it up with paper towel and I did that a couple times and it lightened that area quite a bit so that I was able to outline the moon with a darker cloud and it looked a little brighter than it would have if I just kept that sort of soft gray base. For the lightning, as I mentioned, I grabbed a really fine detail brush and my white gouache and just started going in creating random jagged lines coming from the clouds down behind the castle. And I looked up a bunch of pictures of lightning to do this because at first I was just winging it doing it for my brain. And it turns out that I have never really thought about the shape of lightning that much in detail before. And I felt like it wasn't really looking as lightning-like as I'd wanted. So I feel like this is always my advice in every video, but reference images are everything. And it really helped once I looked up photographs of lightning.
I then used my same tiny detail brush and lamp black to add some shrubs and little dead trees of varying sizes in a couple different areas just to add some texture to the landscape with the intention of creating a big dead tree in the foreground on the right side. Also at the last minute, I decided to use my detail brush to create a tiny little person riding a horse across the bridge. Don't look too closely at that part because to be honest, the horse doesn't look like a horse at all, <laughs> but it was tiny, okay? I did my best. Once I had my painting finished and I'd left it to completely dry, I scanned it into my computer and then printed it out again. The reason I wanted to do this is because my plan all along was to cut up the painting into five panes across a two page spread to be the cover page. And initially my plan was just to cut my painting, but once I finished it, I realized that I couldn't do it. I'd put so much time and effort into it. It was just too painful. So I scanned it and printed it out again, and then I cut it up and I felt much better about that. Plus it means that it's not as thick and rigid in my bullet journal as it would have been since I used watercolor paper for this painting. Printer paper is a lot thinner and more flexible. So my concept here was to make it look almost like far away from this castle, maybe across another valley is another manor or another castle. And they have these intricate windows and they can look out across the valley and see Dracula's castle. So I wanted to kind of create an outline around each pane of the painting, and then to add some intricate details around the corners to make them look framed, almost like they're windows or framed artwork on the wall. Another interesting fact about Dracula is that it was almost called The Undead. The working title of the novel was The Dead Undead, which was later shortened to just The Undead. Then, right before it was published, Stoker changed the title once more to Dracula. It's hard to imagine Dracula being called anything else. Then I cut away my pages all the way through to the last page of the spread so that no matter what page I'm on, whether it's my monthly calendar or any of my weeklies, I'll be able to see the first panel of this painting on the left and on the right, I'll be able to see the October header, which I'm about to work on now. So for the lettering for the setup, I made another choice that contributed to this taking me so darn long to do, which was that I was inspired by this super cool font that I found on Creative Market. I'll link it in the description box if you wanna check out the font. And I just thought it looked so cool and creepy and perfect for a Dracula theme. So I did my very best to recreate this font for the October header. And for later headers, when I use the same font, I started getting a little more creative and switching things up, mostly just cause I didn't wanna bother to make each letter look the same every time. So I started getting a little more creative, but the October lettering is me just doing as close as I can of a recreation of what the letters look like in this font. They're just so darn cool and I'm really happy with how it turned out, even though it took me what felt like my entire lifetime. While I was on the final page of my setup, I decided to also create an H on the other side. This is the first letter of the quote I wanted to include, and I wanted to do that old fairy tale thing where the first letter is big and intricate, and then the rest of the letters are just the regular font. So that's what I did here, made a big H in the same font that sort of looks like there could be spider webs or blood dripping, and then I'll finish up the quote at the end. Flipping back to the second spread of the setup, which is going to be my monthly calendar, and I decided to emulate the dimensions and also the intricate frame look of the cover page here with the calendar as well. Thank you. 
I also used the same intricate creepy font for the initial of each day of the week along the top and then decided to simplify things. I would go in with my stamp set to stamp in all the dates. The last fact I want to share in this video is that Dracula wasn't a hit when it first came out. It got some good reviews, but the sales were nothing spectacular. And by the end of his life, Stoker was so poor that he had to ask for a compassionate grant from the Royal Literary Fund. After Stoker's death in 1922, a German film company made the now classic Nosferatu, for which they changed the names of the characters, but didn't get permission from Stoker's widow to use the story, for which she held the theatrical rights. Stoker's widow sued the German film company, and a German court ordered that every copy of the film be destroyed. By some stroke of luck, one copy survived and eventually made its way to the United States, where it developed a cult following. And today, it's thought of as one of the definitive pieces of horror cinema. Nosferatu and the many, many films to follow, inspired by Dracula, are what have made the name Dracula a household one. Once I finished my calendar, I flipped over to start working on my weeklies. And of course, I had to continue in the same vein of these really intricate frames that almost look like windows and my drippy, bloody writing for the headers. Because I cut the pages on both sides by a third, I ended up not having space for tabs this time around or for my traditional weekly task list where I keep track of which day of the week I do each task. So instead of my traditional weekly task list, I'm just creating an even more basic weekly task list without tracking which day of the week I'm working on or completing each task. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can check out my video all about the rolling weekly, what it looks like, how to use it. But I decided to simplify it this time because I really had a vision for being able to see part of the castle and the header no matter what page I was on. And now flipping back to the final page of the spread where I'm adding in my quote, which of course is from Dracula by Bram Stoker. And the quote I chose was, how blessed are some people whose lives have no fears, no dreads, to whom sleep is a blessing that comes nightly and brings sweet dreams. And I feel like this quote has even more weight knowing that Dracula was initially inspired by one of Stoker's own nightmares. So with that, we've come to the end of this setup. So I'll show you a quick flip through of all the spreads here. This setup took me ages, truly such a long time. I'm really happy with how it looks. I have to say it turned out pretty much exactly how I envisioned it and I'm super happy with it. It definitely gives me a Dracula vibe, all of the spooky vibes I could want, but it took me a very long time, so I might not do another theme like this anytime soon. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Before I go, I want to take a quick second to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Alice, Amber, Ellie, Gemma, Holly, Imbar, Indiana, Indra, Jacqueline, Jasmine, Kirsten, Lauren, Liz, Mallory, Megan, Michael, Mio, Stephanie, Tim and Yvonne. Welcome all of you to the squad. We are so excited to have you. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. All patrons get a printable from this setup. So if you like this painting that I spent hours and hours and hours and hours working on and you want a printable version of it, you can join the squad on Patreon. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thanks so much for watching this video. Thank you for being patient as it took me a little longer to get it out for you. And I'll see you all really soon in my next one which may or may not have to do with spooky books that I recommend reading at this time of year and the spooky books I hope to read this October, including Dracula. Okay, bye friends.